number one, you need to be committed. Uh, the, the, the entrepreneur's life is filled with pain and suffering and failure. It's, uh, there, there's no easy road. And I think the, the first thing that an entrepreneur needs to decide is whether they're prepared to go on that journey. It needs to, to, uh, it needs to have someone who's prepared to persevere through all that. I think number two, you need to be able to attract people to your cause. There's no such thing as an army of one. Uh, you need to be able to uh, be a, a, a big uh, a sucking machine where you bring in people that are as passionate and as driven and that have a complementary skill set to you, whether they come in as co-founders or, or cornerstone employees that are themselves incented to be successful in the business. And then I think number three, you want to recognize uh, a sense of uh, timing. Um, the reality is that 80% of the success of a business, I would argue, has nothing to do with the entrepreneur themselves. It has to do with the lay of the land. You want to be sensitive to market timing. Is there a seam in the market that's opening up? Is there an opportunity that's created because you're in Asia Pacific, because you're in Singapore, because you're in a specific market? Is there something that's going on from a regulatory perspective or is there a, a demographic shift? So you want to be very, very sensitive to identifying uh, opportunities that you can then exploit. The most important thing for us is focus, 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 and thereby obviously translating into execution. There will be many opportunities for the startup to chase, but you must be able to decide what, which battles you want to take. It's better to be really showing exponential growth in one area than to be moderate in multiple areas. Decide on which is your key strength, focus on it to show key metrics growth exponentially. Secondly is as well making sure that you are able to attract talent. Having a strong team enables you to, to overcome many challenges, different battles that you will encounter. And thirdly as well is not to be afraid of testing, doing experiments, right? Making sure that while you test out a strategy, if, you, if it's not working, make sure you quickly move on. Often when you start a company, it's typically one or two, three founders. But to scale the company, you've got to start to push that responsibility down to other people um, in the company. So you can't be the person who's taking the decision the whole time. So you need to build a team around you who can do the jobs better than you can. So you need to hire really, really great people it is the number one thing to do. The second thing to do is then you've got to then push that responsibility down and put processes in place within the company so that the company can start operating by itself, right? So you can now scale the business. So then people can take decisions and they have the authority to take decisions. Lastly is then just you know, trust people. You have to really trust the team around them and let them, and you're gonna make mistakes. But so as long as you trust the people and you recover from those mistakes quickly, then you'll succeed and scale the business. Having the right team. Uh, team is the most important thing in any startups. Having the right team will be able to execute uh, the plan uh, you know, properly. Uh, second very important thing, of course, is having enough money. Uh, because that you always need to raise enough money to execute your idea into a, into a viable business. Uh, third very important thing is having a, a group of mentors or people which you can uh, sort of uh, consult and discuss idea with you because a lot of startups what you're trying to do is um, something that's very truly disruptive something that you've ne never seen before so having people which you can talk to and can bounce idea can discuss what are the issues and options uh, will help you to scale the business uh, ultimately mm -hmm.